There we go. Okay, reviewing number one. Did the answer key just pop up? Nope. Okay, never mind. I thought it was going to do something different. Okay, number one. What is the answer? ISIS. Um, number one, I was sure. I mean, not A. Number one? Oh, I shuffled the responses. Sorry, Isis, that's my fault. Again, sorry, still learning Desmos. Okay, I'm gonna go over it very, very quickly. Uh, number one is a new military base that opens in a rural community. Number two is coalition building. Number three, congratulations, Ariana, the only one to get it correct. It shielded newspapers from the government. Number four, the Department of Justice. Number five, the House has a committee on ways and means while the Senate does not. Number six, the Supreme Court put limitations on Congress's use of the Commerce Clause to justify legislation. And number seven, to influence elections by drawing boundary lines to increase the influence of some voters while reducing the influence of others. Awesome, well done. I am actually going to pause your Desmos screen while I get ready to share my screen because we have a lecture. So while I'm getting myself set up, go ahead and take the next minute to get yourself set up with notes, a pen or pencil, and I'm frozen. Okay, there we go. Um, go ahead and set yourself up with a piece of paper, well, multiple pieces of paper, and a writing utensil. Once you have materials ready for a lecture, please chat a 100. Thank you, Isis. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you, Montana. Thank you, Naziah. Thank you, Zierra. Thank you, Janiah. Also, please make sure that we have our cameras on and we have our faces in the frame. Thank you, Dwayne. Fifteen more seconds. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Some of these slides are going to be pretty long and pretty dense. So it's economic policy. There's no way I can sugarcoat it. It's a dense lecture, but we got this because it's Monday and we only have a few more days left till break. So this is the last lecture you have for a couple of weeks. Silver linings. So today we are going to be looking at political ideology and economic policy. So specifically, what relationship do Democrats and Republicans have with economics? And one of the key one of the key concerns is how much should the government be involved? Beliefs about the proper level of government involvement depends on your economic belief. And we're going to discuss two economic theories regarding how the government should construct fiscal policy. The first is Keynesian. I hate this name, Keynesian. So the second, uh, 
So the first one we're going to look at is Keynesian economics. And if you believe in Keynesian economics, you believe that if businesses are struggling and there are few jobs, it's the government's responsibility to step in. For Keynesian economics, they believe that the government should spend money to help create jobs and improve businesses. Some other beliefs that they have, for, and again, this is Keynesian, I'm sorry that those two are switched on the slide. For Keynesian, they believe that a government, if, if, sorry, they believe that if a government is overly involved, again, if the gover government is overly involved, it will limit economic growth. They also advocate for low taxes in order to motivate workers. So again, low taxes to motivate workers. So again, they believe that you should have low taxes to motivate workers. In addition to this, in addition to low tax rates, supply side economic, ec economists, that's how you say that word. In addition to low tax rates, supply side econo economists believe that the government should not spend excessively. Next, we're going to look quickly at laissez-faire capitalism, laissez-faire. And what laissez-faire, Madison has my brain messed up, so I can't remember how to pronounce this word. Um, laissez-faire economics is the belief that the market will work if you just leave it alone. So again, the market will work if you just leave it alone. They advocate for minimal government involvement. And the focus of the economy should be on productivity, not inequality. Laissez-faire economics was very popular pre-Great Depression. So again, before the Great Depression, laissez-faire was very, very popular and has regained popularity since the 1970s. Next, we're going to look at Keynesianism. That's not a fun word to say out loud. Uh, Keynesianism. 
and it is based on the works of John Maynard Keynes. If you can't read the slide, Keynesianism is spelled K-E-Y-N-E-S-I-A-N-I-S-M. And again, it's based on the works of John Maynard Keynes. And he believed that if you have large inequality in wealth, this will ultimately hurt the economy. He believed that the government needed to make sure that the middle class and working poor have money to spend. And lastly, they need to cut income taxes to the middle class and to the poor. And the last one we're gonna look at is monetarism. No, you didn't, you're good. So again, the last one is monetarism. And people that believe in monetarism believe that the government cannot act quickly enough to fix the economy. And so instead, they should just focus on keeping it stable. And this leads to trickle-down economics. Now we're going to look at what are some government policies that they can use to controlling the economy. There are two major tools that Congress and the president can use to impact fiscal policy. So again, two major tools that Congress and the president can use to impact fiscal policy the federal budget and taxes. The federal budget is the way that the government spends its money. The budget is proposed by the president
after it's proposed to after it's proposed by the president, it goes to Congress. And Congress edits and approves it. And then finally, after the edits, it's sent back to the president who then chooses whether or not to approve it or not. So for example, if the president proposes a budget and then Congress edits it in a way that he does not like, he does not have to sign it. The federal budget pays for programs and services that help American citizens. Things like food stamps, Medicare, Social Security. And for example, in 2012, the federal budget was $3.67 trillion. Next, we're going to look at monetary policies. In monetary policies, they set interest rates and they control banking reg regulations. Next, we're gonna look at fiscal policies. So again, monetary is they set interest rates and control banking regulations. Next up is fiscal. And for fiscal, tax rates determine how much money the government has. And there are even some progressive fiscal policies. Again, progressive fiscal policies. These progressive taxes help redistribute wealth. Things like social security or income taxes. And for this slide, the last thing we're going to talk about is regulation. As you might remember, in the progressive era, one of the things that they fought for was for more regulation of businesses, which means more government interference of businesses. 
it's through regulation that minimum wages are set, work hours are limited, We also have things like child labor laws because of regulation and social security. Sorry, I don't know why this is edited like that, okay. There are three main things that we look at when we measure the economy. The first thing that we measure is the unemployment rate. And the unemployment rate refers to The unemployment rate refers to the amount of workers who are actively looking for jobs but cannot find them. So again, it's the workforce that is actively looking for a job that cannot find them. That is the unemployment rate. So for example, if you had a couple where the man decides to stay decides to remain a stay-at-home dad, if he is not looking for a job, he does not count towards the unemployment rate. Another issue that we have with the economy is inflation. And what inflation refers to is the rise in price for a good for no reason other than inflation. And what this represents is the decline of the value of the dollar. And finally, we're gonna look at the consumer price index. And the consumer price index refers to the measure of inflation which determines the price of a fixed good over time. So those are some key ideas about the economy, but now we're gonna look at the interaction between the government and the economy. Traditionally, if the president is a president during a time of poor economy, his approval ratings lower. So if you are the president, the worse the economy, the worse your approval ratings. This, uh, their approval ratings are also influenced by unemployment rates. And 
And in terms of, oops, too far. And in terms of political parties in the economy, with political parties in the economy, Republicans will tolerate unemployment whereas Democrats will tolerate inflation. And this is how the government controls the economy. The first is through monetary policy. Monetary policy refers to the manipulation of the supply of money in private hands. So again, the manipulation of the supply of money in private hands. Too much cash and too much credit will create inflation. And most of this is maintained through the Federal Reserve Board. The Federal uh, Reserve Board does a few different things. One, they set discount rates, which refers to the interest rate to borrow money from the government. They also set reserve requirements. So how much money banks must have on hand. And finally, the Federal Reserve Board is in charge of buying and selling government bonds. The first was they set discount rates, the interest rate to borrow money from the government. Next, we're gonna look at arenas of economic policy making. Thanks for the um, fortitude guys. I know that econ was not my favorite class. So I understand that this is a lot. So one of the things that is an economic policy making is the policies protecting consumers. These are things like the Food and Drug Administration. So again, the Food and Drug Administration, they're the people that keep us safe. Make sure that nothing gross is in your food. Uh, 
Another example is the Federal Trade Commission. And the Federal Trade Commission regulates false and misleading trade practices. Like buying a lot of stock at GameStop. I don't know if you guys saw that in the news a couple weeks ago. Interesting stuff. So again, the Federal Trade Commission regulates false and misleading trade practices. For globalization in the economy, corporations often have to battle for profits in this new technology. And the government needs to make sure that America stays competitive in the global economy. I don't know how much you guys remember from our progressive lectures, but in terms of labor in the government, the government tends to side with business over labor unions. But labor unions are still able to effectively champion for their rights through things like collective bargaining. And collective bargaining is when representatives and management determine pay and working conditions. But there have been government pushbacks to unionization. One of those is the Taft-Hartley Act, Taft, T-A-F-T, Hartley, H-A-R-T-L-E-Y Act. And the Taft-Hartley Act was an anti-union piece of legislation. And what this does is it allows uh, employees it allows employees to refuse to join a union even in unionized companies And there are a lot of ways that businesses benefit from the government more than individuals do. For example, the government can give loans to businesses or even bail them out if they are in financial trouble. So now, if you look on the screen, you can see where a lot most of our federal budget comes from. As you can see, most of it is through individual taxes, so like the taxes that we pay. But there are also some corporate income taxes and um, social insurance and retirement receipts. 
which includes things like social security and Medicare taxes. So those are different taxes than like regular taxes. So this is the budget from 2010. So this is just kind of shows how significant individual taxes are. Which we're gonna talk about right now, just in time for tax season too. So when you have your parents talking about taxes, now you'll know what they're talking about. So in order, to, in order for the government to, to keep running, they have to tax their citizens. And tax policies have to be approved by both Congress and the president. And the most significant tax that we have is the income tax. The income tax was put into place with the 16th amendment. And what this refers to is the amount of income you make affects the amount of taxes you pay. And the rationale behind this is the more you make, the more you are able to contribute. However, there is still some conflict over taxes. So for example, people might be able to find tax loopholes and you also have some uh, political parties arguing to lower taxes. And as you guys remember from the Biden presidential run, tax reform is something that uh, each party has a lot of opinions about. Okay, we're gonna look at the last slide and then we'll finish up. There are two factors two factors that economists and, polit and politicians look at when evaluating the health of the economy. So again, what makes a healthy economy? They look at inflation and they look at unemployment. And now we're gonna look at the Federal Reserve and that's gonna be the last thing we review today. The Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve creates monetary policy and it's a government agency that works separate from the three branches. The board members of the Federal Reserve are appointed by the president. And it has several different roles. 
it makes our money. It's the government's bank. And it receives all of the government's funds. They also can manipulate interest rates. And these interest rates help control loans and how quickly Americans can pay back loans. And that is where we are going to pause. Obviously, we did not get to the exit ticket. Please um, know that that exit ticket is there as an opportunity. So if you would like to go to the exit ticket um, later on today or throughout the week to complete it, uh, you can get some extra credit. It's through Desmos. So go ahead and take pictures or uh, submit photos of your notes. And once I get photos of your notes, you guys are free to go. So again, please make sure you are turning in your notes before you leave. <laughs> 